Let's welcome in Texas Republican Congressman Ron Paul. Congressman, thank you so much for taking the time to join us. You had an opportunity to hear what thank the you. president had to say. Do you agree or disagree with the choices being made this morning? Well, I can't agree with socialism. I mean, this is just more government. And the idea that we can create wealth out of a printing press just doesn't make any sense to me. Uh, I think what we have here is a fleet of helicopters. Uh, and Ben Bernanke said that he could always re-inject credit into the market. But we, we're broke. We don't have real wealth. And this is all new credit. And we're going to guarantee everything. Everything. Bad loans, good loans, or whatever. It, it can't work. What if this is nothing more than pushing on a string? And uh, sure, there's a lot of credit, but what if borrowers don't want to borrow? And what if lenders are still skittish? This is what the case has been. They haven't been wanting to. Even some of these big banks aren't all that anxious to be socialized. So it is a mess. I just can't believe for a minute that just creating credit out of thin air will solve the problem. This, to me, is a dollar crisis. And what what we're doing here is, is guaranteeing the, right. the devaluation of the dollar. I was just going to say that because, you know, Congressman, you and I have talked about this on many occasions about what has been happening to the dollar, particularly over the past couple of years, and, and the fact that you're unhappy that it consistently we appear to not truly be supporting a strong U.S. dollar. Let me ask you this. If, in fact, we are in the midst of a global recession and that the U.S. is at the forefront of turning things around and we do see the European Union cut rates aggressively, is there a chance that sort of de facto the dollar becomes stronger because we're at the forefront of this as opposed to us doing something that would truly restore confidence in the U.S. dollar? Well, well, they're looking at the wrong thing. If you look at the dollar in relationship to other weak currencies, they're all fiat currencies. So Europe is socialized and they run out of debt. How can, how can you say the dollar is strong because temporarily it goes up against the euro or, or whatever? What you have to look at is the purchasing power of the dollar. You have to look at the checkbook of every American consumer and whether they have any money left over. The value of the dollar goes down. The cost of living goes up. The standard of living goes down. Taxes go up. The government keeps borrowing, keeps taxing. Right. You know, you cannot save the dollar by printing more dollars. You can't save this financial system because the problem is, is based on the fact that we have been inflating and distorting the economy for so many years. So, Congressman, how do we turn this around? It appears to me as though we had, frankly, no choice in the matter here. We saw what the European Union was doing. And if we didn't do something similar, some would have suggested that all of our Band-Aid approaches that we put into place over the past six months would have had irreparable damage here in the United States. How do we change it? Well, you change it by allowing them, us to return to the marketplace. We shouldn't have uh, the government dictating everything and all the guarantees and, and the loans and, and the inflation. You, allow, you have to allow the liquidation of debt. You have to allow the market to set the prices. And what we're trying to do now is fix prices, keep prices of houses up and financial instruments up artificially. You know, uh, getting illiquid assets, that means they're worthless and the taxpayer has to buy these. This won't solve the problem. In a way, Japan did this. Remember how long they kept uh, right. their assets on the books at, mm -hmm. false, uh, at, at false values, and we're doing the same thing again. It just delays the process. No, you can't get out of it without some pain. The question is, are you going to have a short, painful period of a year, or are you going to prolong the agony and turn us into a, uh, a, a depression? The, the Nikai was at peak in 1989, and it's still probably 20% of what it is, and this is what we're doing. We are getting guaranteeing that this process will last for a long, long time because we don't have sound money, we don't have sound economic principles. You can't save free markets by socialism. I don't know where this idea ever came from, but you have to have, you'd save free markets by promoting free markets and sound money and balanced budgets. The whole reason why nobody wants to address the real problem of this is we're spending a trillion dollars a year overseas running an empire and it's coming to an end. This country is bankrupt and we won't admit it. And eventually though the dollar will go bust and we will bring our troops home and we will live within our means but we ought to do it sensibly rather than waiting for the collapse of the dollar and this is what we're doing we're on the verge of destroying our dollar and then you think we have problems now 
problems end will be a lot worse. It'll look like the Weimar Republic or a third right. world nation. And a lot of people know that and they're scared to death. But we don't need to be making the problem worse by just propping up everything with more government programs and more inflation and more helicopters. It won't work. All right, Congressman Ron Paul, thank you so much. Love your enthusiasm.